Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here, and today, the probably most insane ship Wargaming is going to release this year has finally been released. I'd actually argue this is probably one of the most insane things Wargaming has released in the last couple of years, including all the hybrid ships and all that jazz. That is the U-4501, the submarine capable of going 37, 38-ish knots under water with a proper build into it and it is um it is quite goofy it is quite ridiculous but is it absolutely busted well that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video so if you guys do find this video informational and entertaining or you enjoy it please drop a like leave a comment helps out on the youtube side of things so the u4501 the ship is uh already coming into game with a bit of a reputation as most of ships of this caliber do she was announced way way back when submarines were first announced like actually i think almost two or three years ago and in her initial stat she could go i believe upwards of 40 knots underwater which is absolutely insane as if you know 37 38 knots right now isn't insane enough that was her base stats before you went and built into it or anything like that now thankfully she has undergone a lot a lot of changes evidently wargaming can at least realize that having a submarine that goes 40 knots underwater is a little bit goofy so they bonked it down in a couple of ways besides just of course toning down her top speed so if you do want to grab one of these right now she is available in the armory for 200 and i think 50 000 coal and then apparently they are selling her in the premium shop as well but i mean that's going to be in, in american dollars around 180 dollars so that's a little much when you can't get the ship completely for free by using your coal so it is free at least for the time being depending upon how long they decide to let this thing sit on the shelf but anyway so it is it it is something all right I've, I've played quite a few rounds in her already i got a pretty good feel for how at least how i play the ship um be it is that how it's supposed to be played i don't know but it's how i've been playing it and how it's been working for me also too this thing's tiny i'm pretty sure this is the smallest controllable ship in game it is like a third the size of most tier 10 dds so there's that now the u4501 how is she and how, how how busted is she well she is something all right now let's talk about the speed that's probably what everyone wants to know yes it is ridiculously fast underwater in a straight line you can go 37 38 knots with the flag and then with you know the appropriate skills and such um although i don't think there's really anything that can boost your speed underwater anymore they, they remove that they made that work at periscope depth and surface but that's a uh, another hiccup here with the ship so while it's incredibly fast underwater yes 30 37 38 knots in a straight line it is slow at the surface like where most players say submarines should be at at the surface she goes 21 knots you know of course you know a little bit faster with the speed flag which means that yes this is a submarine that can be overtaken by the vermont because the vermont can fix can um fit what is it, swift and silent something like that whatever it's called where when she's undetected she can't get that speed boost so yes you can be overtaken by you know the faddle ships on the surface so that that's a bit of a hiccup in her play style and ironically i find in um most of the matches that i was in i actually wasn't fast enough to you know get into action and such because you're stuck at 21 knots on the surface and despite the ship's speed it only has an underwater time of three minutes so you can't just sit down underwater and roll and zip around the map like i assume many a player thought you could you do have to jog at the surface at times at least to replenish your battery which does recharge relatively fast you don't have to be in the surface i think for maybe like a a minute and change to get your your battery back but in a game where most matches at higher tier are realistically done at the six or seven minute mark that's a, a fair amount of time that you're wasting recharging your battery or running at the surface and not doing your thing. So there is that. Now some other caveats too. The ship is tiny, which means it has a really small HP pool. 
um, with the build that I'm running on the ship, my hit points are 14,100, which um, that ain't a lot, even by submarine standards, which means those random depth charges become a lot more scary since you have, well, quite a, 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 a quite a small amount of HP to work with. There's not a lot of wiggle room. Now you might notice too, well, see, the, the thing has a heal. Yes, it does have a heal. However, you have to be on the surface to use it, which I think is an excellent decision because being able to heal underwater and heal your way through depth charge attacks is dumb. So I'm glad they introduced that as well. Which again means you have to be on the surface, you have to be running at 20 knots if you want to use your heal. So that's good. Now, the torpedoes. You only have homing torpedoes. And their alpha is 9,000 and change. Almost 10,000. You know, let's call it 10,000 for argument's sake. You have four tubes in the front, six in the back with four loaders. And you have a 51 second reload time on them torpedoes. So, not a lot of damage. They are homing torpedoes. And you'll have a 10 kilometer range. So, you got to get close. Now, you might be saying, well, that's where the speed comes in, right? Yes, it is. What I was tending to do with the U501 is that I would typically run on the surface and try to get, you know, in a position where I could kind of see what I had to work with and see the targets I wanted to go after. And then I would try to get as close as I could, and like comfortably before diving. That way, you know, you have the maximum amount of dive time to get in and get out. So I would try to find, you know, maybe a battleship or two that are off by themselves or a cruiser that's not paying attention dive, run towards them, get about four or five kilometers away, launch my torpedoes, and I would launch them as if I was launching unguided torpedoes, so obviously try to take the ship's uh, movement into account, and then when the torpedoes were like, you know, three-ish kilometers away, then I'd go ahead and throw out my uh, sonar ping, get them locked onto the target, that way if, you know, the target does try to clear the sonar ping, at least the torpedoes are kind of heading in the right direction and when I got it down it was working relatively well when I could get into that position when I could you know find a couple of ships that weren't paying attention or find a couple of ones that were off by themselves it worked relatively well the issue again I was having was trying to get into position without using up all my battery because you got to keep in mind with how close you got to get to these ships you have to you know leave too right so you need enough time to not only attack the target but then get out and survive so you can either you know go back in for another attack run or you can you know move on to the next target and you do have the backup battery consumable which gives you 30 seconds of battery charge so you have like four minutes underwater with you know again the, the full battery time and then the backup battery on top of that which isn't an incredible amount. I mean, it's on the low. It's oh, it's definitely on the low side for most tier ten uh, submarines. So that there is very much that factor going in there. So you have to be very, very cognizant of your surroundings, and you have to plan your escape. Um, of course, the speed, you know, going 36 knots, you can cover a lot of distance going 36 knots in, you know, three or four minutes. That is true, but it's going to suck if when you come to surface, uh-oh, there's a ship next to you, or within your 5.4 kilometer detect, and now it's very awkward, and you're probably going to die because of your low HP. So, you, you have to be very much aware of your surroundings and, and be planning your attack and your subsequent leaving of your area that you just, you know, torpedoed that poor battleship, that poor cruiser, that now everyone knows you're there, so, yeah. Now, the speed is, is of course, crazy and very, very useful for, for a couple of reasons. One, because, of course, you can cover a large amount of time very quickly. Two, <laughs> players haven't adapted to this thing's speed yet, because the uh, ASW aircraft, for, for most cases, you just smack down W and, you know, you're fine, because they, they, they don't give you enough lead. Um... Oh, also, too, underwater, if you do touch A or D, you are going to go 20 knots. This thing just drops like a rock when it comes to its speed underwater when you start to maneuver. So, yeah, straight line speed, then that's all it's got. It's not like it's, you know, highly maneuverable or anything like that in terms of, you know, keeping its speed. It bleeds energy very, very quickly when it comes to turn fighting or trying to, you know, maneuver. So best thing, again, you know, just smack W a couple times and run away from the depth charge planes that are chasing you down. So, um, overall, 
This thing, definitely in the right hands, is going to be absolutely terrifying to deal with. But they have at least put some type of, you know, common sense and limited it, it, it in a few ways. You know, if it was like the one that we got in the original post talking about, you know, 40 knot speed and all this jazz, yes, that would be absolutely broken. Um, but in its current state, it is a ship that you have to play close. It's a ship that doesn't have a lot of HP. Yes, it can regenerate health, but it's got to come to the surface for that. And it's going to be stuck going 20 knots for the entire duration. Because you can't just come up and pop the heel and go back down. When you go back down, the heel will stop functioning all in all. I, I made that mistake in my like second match with it. So you can't just you know come into periscope death, pop it, and go back down. You have to stay surface because when you go into water, it cancels the heel. So there is very much that aspect about it. It's a bit trickier to play than the other submarines, of course. So it is a lot more involved with the gameplay style than just oh i'm just going to you know, sit here and spam torpedoes and spam my um my ping you can't really do that it does have a, a slow recharge on the ping as well so it's not like the other ships where you can just you know ding 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 keep doing that until your torpedoes eventually uh find the target so i wouldn't say it's you know overpowered or completely broken it is a little goofy on the insane side with its speed underwater and again i feel that if you give this to the hands of a proper submarine captain it's going to be pretty cracked but it's not broken to the point of where you can just you know give it to somebody and they're going to go wipe the field with it that that to me is a broken ship like thunder and conquer back in the day when you just load he burn everybody down and get 300 some thousand damage that's broken right because that's pretty brainless gameplay you have to be wise about your decisions here because there's not a lot of there's almost no wiggle room, room for mistakes here with that small hp and the um the the, the low dive time so you, you got to be aware of your surroundings you have to make the right decisions but again get give this to the hands of a proper sub captain it's going to be pretty insane so that's my two cents of the u4501 so far guys i know you guys think in the comments down below if you've encountered the ship or if you've had this ship what do you guys think about her again we know all that good stuff in the comments down below hope you guys have a wonderful thursday wonderful rest of your week hope to catch you guys in the next one